Hello and welcome to LMU Community TV News. I'm Adam Haley. Thank you for joining us. Let's take a look at the stories we'll have for you today. An escaped inmate has finally been caught after being on the run for two weeks. 27-year-old Tommy E. Smith of Middlesbrough was captured Saturday evening around 6 p.m. after an anonymous tip. The tip led the Middlesbrough Police Department and the Bell County Sheriff's Department to a residence on Hamlet Lane where he was taken into custody. Smith fled the Bell County Detention Center back on July 2nd with Jeffrey Clark, who later turned himself in. Smith will now be charged with escape second degree for his escape. A Bell County man is in jail in Whitley County after a car chase. A Whitley County Sheriff's Park, uh, deputy attempted to pull over a red Ford driven by Daryl Jones of Pineville after he ignored a stop sign in the Canada Towns community. Jones sped up and began to drive erratic and dangerous once the deputy attempted to pull him over. Jones eventually stopped and tried to run away on foot, but was caught. He is being charged with first degree fleeing or evading arrest, second count of fleeing on foot, DUI, drug paraphernalia after it was found in the back seat of his car, reckless driving, and other charges. He is still in the Whitley County Detention Center. Now let's take a look at your community calendar of events coming up over the next couple of weeks. LMU's Police Security and Dispatch will test its emergency siren on July 19th between the hours of 12.30 p.m. and 2.30 p.m. This is only a test, and for more information, you can call 423-869-6389. Middlesbrough Youth Football will hold sign-ups on July 22nd at Hibbett Sports in the Middlesbrough Mall. Registration fee is $60, and the parents or guardians must bring the child's birth certificate. First Baptist Church will hold their VBS with the theme Galactic Starveyors. The VBS will be from July 16th through the 21st with a free dinner each day at 5 p.m. and the class will be from 545 to 830 p.m. Classes for all ages. For more information or to register, you can call 423-626-5401. Cedar Grove Baptist Church will hold their VBS on July 16th through the 20th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. and there will be classes for every age. The church is located at 675 Cedar Grove Road in Tazewell, Tennessee and everyone is welcome. Liberty Baptist Church will hold their VBS on July 16th through the 21st. Sunday night service began at 6 p.m. with the weekday services beginning at 7. The theme this year is Be Strong in the Lord and everyone is welcome. Sugar Grove Baptist Church will hold their VBS on July 17th through the 21st at 7 p.m. They'll have classes for all ages and everyone is welcome. Swimming lessons are being held at the New Tazewell City Pool. Lessons for different age groups are being held at different times throughout the summer. Ages 6 through 8 will be held July 17th through the 20th starting at 10 a.m. Ages 9 and up will be held on July 24th through the 27th at 10 a.m. For scheduling or more information, you can contact Mindy Williams at 423-441-2354. St. Julian and St. Anthony Catholic Churches will be holding their Vacation Bible Schools from July 17th through the 20th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And that's at 118 East Chester Avenue, and that's being held in Middlesbrough, Kentucky. The Bell County Extension Office will be hosting a painting with Pizzazz class on July 17th at 1 p.m. Everyone should bring their own canvases and everything else will be provided. For more information or to register, you can call the office at 606-337-2376. Middlesbrough's Small Business Development Center will hold a bookkeeping made easy class on July 18th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. at Southeast Middlesbrough Campus in room 219. The fee is $75. The teacher is Judy Kerr. Free registration is required, and for more information or to register, you can contact Gabriel at 888-225-7232. New Beginning Christian Academy is hosting a back-to-school celebration on July 21st from 6 to 8 p.m. They are at 2305 Highway 63 in Harrogate, Tennessee. There will be inflatables for kids and free food. Everyone is welcome, and for more information, you can call them at 423-869-7332. 7-8. UK Cooperative Extension Service will present a food preservation workshop on July 26th at 10 a.m. at the Knox County Extension Office. The cost of the workshop is $10 and it will cover lunch and the materials. There is a limit of 10 spots, so to reserve your spot, you need to call 606-337-2376.
The Bell County Extension Office is hosting a Plate It Up cooking class on July 27th at 1 p.m. at the Extension Office. The students will be making grilled sweet potatoes. For more information or to register, you can call 606-337-2376. The Bell County Extension Office is holding a DIY Mechanics 101 class on August 3rd at 10 a.m. The class will be located at the Bell County Bus Garage. The students will learn how to change their own tire and oil, as well as doing a full vehicle inspection. For more information or to register, you can call 606-337-2376. Middlesbrough's third annual Wing Fling Festival will be August 5th from 2 to 6 p.m. in downtown Middlesbrough on Cumberland Avenue. For more information, you can visit their Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash wingflingmboro. Vets serving Vets' second annual Freedom Run will be August 5th at the city parking lot in Middlesbrough during the Wing Fling Festival. There will be live music, door prizes, and vendors. Registration begins at 10 a.m. and the ride will begin at noon. The cost per rider is $10 and all the proceeds will benefit Vets serving Vets. And finally, Middlesbrough Pizza Hut will be sponsoring Eat for Pete on August 7th from 5 to 8 p.m. The wait staff will be members of Friends of the Bell County Animal Shelter, and the proceeds and all tips will go to the FOS Pet Food Program for dogs and cats. A flyer must be presented to the Pizza Hut cashier when you're paying your bill. And that is a look at the LMU Community TV calendar. Stay with us as coming up after the break, Brandon Burke will let you know about a high school basketball coaching change and more and sports here on LMU Community TV News. What do we know about learning? It takes place beyond the pages of a book. We learn by exploring, by trying new things, by connecting, by sharing. We learn by taking chances and dreaming big. At Lincoln Memorial University, learning is beyond the books. It's everywhere. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. You see that truck? Oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Bro? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Yeah. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little it's like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time! I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org caregiving. Welcome back. There has been yet another coaching shift in the Claiborne High School basketball program as it was announced last Thursday at, as Bulldog men's basketball head coach Brian O'Dell has resigned from his position. The decision comes just days after Nathan Medlin resigned from the head coaching job for the Lady Bulldogs basketball squad, leaving both spots effectively vacant for the time being. While Medlin stepped down from the women's basketball head coaching position to focus more on the Bulldog football team, as Medlin is also the head man on the gridiron, Odell's six-year stint as head coach of the men's basketball program will be coming to an end, leaving a path to Hancock County as a teacher on the horizon. 
With both head coaching positions now available for CHS's basketball clubs, the Bulldogs have officially begun the search for a replacement for both the men's and women's sides. All applicants should have their resumes submitted by the end of this week, as the girls' cutoff date will be this coming Thursday, July the 20th, while the boys' cutoff date is the following afternoon, Friday, July the 21st. The beginning of the 2017 through 2018 high school basketball campaign will see not one, but two new head coaches for the Claiborne Bulldogs. Dogs. The Tennessee Smokies are currently approaching the final game five in a home series in Kodak versus the Bay Bears of Mobile, a five game set that saw the Smokies jump out to a commanding two game lead in the series. But since that point, Mobile has clawed their way back into the hunt heading into Monday's game five. In Tennessee's second consecutive home series, with the previous coming against the Montgomery Biscuits concluding last Wednesday, the Smokies started off the five-game stand versus the Bay Bears, riding a wave of momentum, having won their last three contests in front of their home crowd against the Biscuits. With two of those three victories versus Montgomery coming in nail-biting fashion, a 5-4 triumph and a 2-1 W just 48 hours later, the Smokies would continue that trend on Thursday in Game 1 against Mobile, coming away with a 5-4 win in their second contest in as many days to reach 11 innings of play. Tennessee and the Bay Bears would meet again the following day for Game 2 in Kodak in the first outing in three tries to not extend to any extra play, as that would not be necessary on the evening as the Smokies provided a scoring explosion in front of their hometown faithful, not allowing another meeting to go down to the wire. Instead of a one-run victory like three of their last four, Tennessee made sure to put the Bay Bears away early, cruising to a six-run triumph, 10-4 to win their fifth straight contest overall. The Smokies jumped out to a 7-1 lead after just two innings of play as Tennessee smashed home four scores in the second and three more in the third, providing too big of a hole for the visitors to climb out of. While the rest of the matchup would see small bursts of back and forth runs scored for either club, in the end, the Smokies held on to win their fifth in a row, their largest winning streak since a 7-0 spurt back in the beginning of the month of July. Tennessee would not have much time to celebrate that streak, however, as Saturday's Game 3 meeting with Mobile ended with the visitors picking up their first W of the series and cutting the five-game set deficit to 2-1 as the Bay Bears picked up a 6-3 victory on the road. Mobile would dish out nearly all the damage they could on the evening in the third inning as a staggering five runs were poured in for the underdogs, leaving the Smokies with a comeback attempt simply too insurmountable to achieve. Tennessee would score their three total runs after seven innings of play. However, the Bay Bears had one more run left in them in the top of the eighth period, allowing Mobile to clinch the three-run victory. The offense would continue for the Bay Bears just 24 hours later in Game 4 on Sunday as the visitors suddenly made the five-game series very interesting, demolishing the Smokies by the score of 6 to nothing to tie the five-game set up at two games apiece. While Tennessee's box score would post zeros in every period throughout the afternoon, Mobile recorded one run in three consecutive innings, leaving the score at 3 to nothing Bay Bears after four periods of play. In the top of the eighth inning, for the second game in a row, Mobile would put the final nail in the coffin for Tennessee, hammering home three more runs to complete the 6 to nothing sweep. After effectively ending the Smokies' five-game winning streak and turning that into a two-game losing slide, the rubber match in the series will get underway on this Monday evening from Kodak for Game 5, with both squads holding two Ws in the five-game set. The winner of Monday's showdown will come away with the series victory as the opening pitch from Smoky Stadium will commence at 7 o'clock p.m. Tennessee holds a 14-10 overall record in Part 2 of the 2017 campaign, five games behind the red-hot Chattanooga Lookouts for the top spot in the Southern League North and one game ahead of the Montgomery Biscuits for second place in the divisional standings. Following Monday's Game 5 in Kodak versus Mobile, the Smokies will have one day off before returning to road play on Wednesday for another five-game series against the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. To find out how Tennessee concludes their tight series against the Bay Bears and for more information on the Smokies' upcoming matchup with Jacksonville, you can head over to www.smokiesbaseball.com. 
The 2017 NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series continued this past Saturday for the Overton's 301 from the New Hampshire Speedway. One week after Martin Truex Jr. emerged victorious from the Quaker State 400 in Sparta, Kentucky, it would be the number 11 vehicle of Denny Hamlin to cross the checkered flag as the victor, followed by Kyle Larson, Martin Truex Jr., Matt Kenseth, and Kevin Harvick to round out the top five. This was Hamlin's first victory of the Cup Series as the driver led 54 laps on his way to victory lane. Daniel Suarez, Clint Boyer, Kurt Busch, Brad Keselowski, and Jimmy Johnson would conclude the top 10, shaking up the chase for the Cup standings in the process. Martin Truex Jr. stays the leader in the standings, followed by Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Larson, Brad Keselowski, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. The Monster Energy Cup Series will resume this coming Sunday, July 23rd for the Brantley Gilbert Big Machine Brickyard 400 from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And that is all for sports over the weekend, but stay tuned as more LMU Community TV news is coming up right after this. So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom got me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really cheese pizza. Uh, sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. Mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day. I really hope I don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Here we go. We're gonna go out there in the rain. You're gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, look at the rain. Oh, look at the rain. Okay, quick. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, yeah. Yes. So much fun. Mwah. Yeah, Dad. You're getting so wet. Oh, I just. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I? and bananas One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org And that's going to do it for this edition of LMU Community TV News. We want to thank you for joining us one more time. I'm Adam Haley, and we'll see you next time.